Hello, Paradise Panther artist. My name is Mrs. Telfer, and I'm excited to introduce you to our next master artist, Maria Martinez. Maria was a Native American artist who died only 40 years ago. She examined traditional Pueblo pottery styles and techniques to create her own unique black-on-black -black pottery. Let's take a look at how she was able to turn what she once thought was a huge mistake into a famed career as one of the greatest traditional Native American potters of the 20th century. Here we go, artists. Here are the materials used by today's artist. Sand, clay, water, yucca leaves, and animal droppings. These are not materials you would use to make a painting normally. So can you guess what the artist was making with these very different materials? Go ahead and raise your hand if you have an idea and your teacher will call on you. Well, our master artist, Maria Martinez, was making pots or bowls made from clay. Today's artist, Maria Martinez, became very famous for using these simple materials to make beautiful pottery. None of these ingredients were ever purchased in a store. They all were gathered from nature, gifts from the Earth Mother, as Maria would say. Let's meet her. Please meet our potter, Maria Martinez, holding one of the many hundreds of pots she made during her lifetime. A potter is someone who makes pots. We'll never know exactly how many pots she made because she never kept count and she didn't bother to sign the bottom of many of her early pots. She guessed once that it was a few thousand pieces. Maria's heritage is Native American or American Indian. Her ancestors were some of the first people to live in this country more than 2,000 years ago. There are many different American Indian tribes in the United States, and they all have their own language and customs. Maria's tribe comes from the southwest, near the Four Corners region. This is the only place in the United States where the borders of four states meet. These four states are Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. And see how the four borders of the states all meet. The tribe that lives right where the four states meet is called the Navajo tribe. The Navajo are the largest Indian tribe today. Just south of the Navajo in New Mexico are the Pueblo Indians. This is where Maria came from. The Pueblo Indians live in 19 Pueblos, which is the Spanish word for village. Go ahead and raise a quiet hand if you have ever visited any of these four states, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, or Arizona. Thank you. You can put your hands down now. The ancestors of the Pueblo Indians were the Anasazi, which means the ancient ones. They lived long ago and built many of their villages way up high on cliffs to protect their homes from flooding and invaders. Imagine climbing a very tall ladder to reach your home as these tourists were doing. The Anasazi did it every day. The Anasazi were excellent potters, a tradition the Pueblos continue today. 
The pots were used for storing food and water and for cooking. The Native Americans began to decorate them to make them look beautiful as well as useful. Pueblo pottery has become famous and valuable due to the talent of Maria Martinez. Here she is standing in the plaza of her Pueblo village. You can see the beautiful New Mexico sky in the background above the church. What kind of climate do you think they have? Go ahead and raise your hand if you have an idea and your teacher will call on you. Yes, their climate is hot and dry. It is a desert. Maria learned how to make pots as a child from her aunt who lived in the same village. Let's take a look at one of Maria's famous pots. This kind of pot is called polychrome, which means it was painted with three or more colors, like brown, black, and white. Maria shaped the pots, but her husband, Julian, did the painting. Years ago, people did not appreciate the hard work that went into making Pueblo pottery. So Maria and Julian made very little money selling their pots when they were young. They would sell them on the side of the road for as little as $2. Today, those same pots would sell for thousands of dollars. Now, let's see how the pots were made. The first step was to walk out into the hills and gather material. They always had special places they would dig to find the very finest clay and sand. They would only take what was needed, never wasting anything. The clay and sand were carefully sifted to take out any pebbles by pouring it through a fine mesh screen. Maria would add just the right amount of water to equal amounts of sand and clay. Then the job of mixing and kneading the clay would begin. If you have ever made bread by kneading dough, or if you have watched someone else do it, it's the same process. Using a quiet hand, raise your hand if you like to eat pancakes or tortillas. Thank you. You can put your hands down now. Then you know the shape Maria would make as the bottom of the pot. This flat shape is called piki. Maria would start building up her pot by adding long coils of clay, which she made by rolling clay between her palms. The coiling reminds me of a snake wrapping itself around a tree trunk. Then Maria would take a piece of dried gourd to smooth and shape the pot. She was a master at this. Her pots were always perfectly round and even. She was also fast. She could make three pots in the time it took other potters to make one. After this step, the pots would be dried in the sun for several days before the final steps. Maria would make a thin mixture of clay and water to coat the pot. While it was wet, a smooth polishing stone was used to rub and rub and rub on the pot to make it shiny. Imagine what it would be like to rub a pot for hours and hours. I bet her hands got tired from so much hard rubbing. The next step was painting the pots, which was done by Maria's husband, Julian, who taught himself how to paint. Remember that Maria and Julian bought nothing in the stores to make their pots. They found special plants in the hillsides and cooked them to make the paint. 
Julian used the long leaves of the yucca plant that he would chew in his mouth to soften them before shaping it into a paintbrush. You might be wondering where did Julian get his ideas when painting his pots? Well, to earn extra money for his family, Julian helped the archeologists who came to dig up the Anasazi ruins in New Mexico. He studied the ancient symbols and patterns on the old pots that had been buried in the ruins for hundreds of years. Many of these old pottery designs and pot shapes had been forgotten. So Julian and Maria played an important role in bringing them back into use among the Pueblo potters. The last step in pottery making is firing the pots to make them hard, which is like baking. It also makes the painted designs permanent. The traditional way for Pueblo potters to fire their pots is to make an outdoor oven in a sand pit. No modern inventions for them. Maria and Julian would carefully stack the pots so they wouldn't break. You can see Maria carefully placing the pots right here. Then old sheets of metal were placed over the pots. You can see a bucket full of sheets of metal right behind Maria here. Now look at the buckets in the foreground right here. Inside these buckets is what they used as fuel to heat up the fire. I bet you wouldn't have guessed that they used animal droppings from horses and cows. This made a hotter fire than just ordinary wood and nothing was wasted in their world. Here, Maria and Julian tended the fire carefully while it got extremely hot. After the fire was out, they used these long sticks and they would carefully uncover the pots. After mixing, kneading, coiling, smoothing, drying, polishing, painting, and finally firing the pots, Maria and Julian were always anxious to see the results of their many weeks of work. One time, after patiently waiting for some white pots with black designs to cool, Maria and Julian were shocked to discover that the pots turned out all black. They accidentally had been smothered by the animal droppings. The black smoke couldn't escape and it turned the pots black. They thought all their hard work had gone to waste. But there were more surprises coming. Their black pots turned out to be a big success. People loved the unusual black pots and wanted them to make more. So Maria and Julian started a new tradition in Pueblo pottery and it made them famous. Their black pots were different from any other Pueblo potter because they have two kinds of black, shiny and dull. It's called black on black. Look at the difference in the black colors. Maria made the shiny areas by rubbing for a long time with her polishing stones. They went into the fire pit as brown pots, but came out black just because of smoke. I'm wondering who are these young boys? Did they make the pottery that they're holding? Please meet Maria's grandsons, Brandon and Derek. Maria taught her children and grandchildren how to make pottery. The tradition has continued through several generations of the Martinez family. Even today, 
they have a store in the Pueblo where you can buy their pots. Maria not only taught other Pueblo Native Americans how to make pots, but she also traveled throughout the United States giving demonstrations and classes with Julian. Maria's pottery now sells for thousands of dollars. Her pots can be seen in fine art galleries and museum collections around the world. People ask what makes the pottery of Maria Martinez so popular. Experts say that her pots are perfect in shape. You'll never see any of her pots that are lopsided or too thick or too thin. Because of her very strong hands that could shape the clay so well and so fast, Maria was able to make her pots perfectly. She could make any size pot from a small pot like this to medium sized pots like these to very large pots like these, they were all perfect. Let's play a true or false game to see what you remember about our master artist, Maria Martinez. As I read each statement, put your thumb up if you think the statement is correct or true, or put your thumb down if you think it is incorrect. Here we go. Number one, the Pueblo Indians are the largest tribe in the United States. Put your thumb up if you think it is true. Put your thumb down if you think it is false. This is false. You should have your thumb down because the Navajo are the largest tribe in the United States. Number two, there is only one Pueblo village. This is false. There are 19 Pueblo villages. Number three, the Anasazi built their homes high up on the cliffs. This is true. You should have your thumb up. Number four, the Anasazi pots were just used for decorations. This is false. The pots were used for storing food or water or for cooking. Number five, Maria learned how to make pots from her grandfather. This is false. She learned how to make pots from her aunt who lived in her village. Number six. Nature was the store Maria and Julian used for making pots. This is true. You should have your thumb up. Number seven. Maria finished her pots in one day. This is false. It took weeks of hard work to make her pots. Number eight. Their black pottery started out as a mistake. This is true. You should have your thumb up. Number nine, Maria painted her pots. This is false. Her husband, Julian, painted the pots. And number 10, Maria and Julian used wood to fire their pots. This is false. They used animal droppings. Great job artists and great listening. 
Great job today, Paradise Panther artists, as we learned about our last master artist for the school year, Maria Martinez. In your art activity, you will have a chance to be a potter and to decorate your own creation, just like Maria. Have a great day, Paradise Panther artists.